What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2021 Volkswagen ID4 courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. And so this is my very first electric car review. I was talking to some of the guys back at Hanover Volkswagen. Jesse, who is the manager there, he is absolutely a huge fan of this thing. So I, of course, am quite excited to be in this one today. This is an all new model from Volkswagen. All electric model competes with a Tesla Model Y slash Model 3, depending on what you're looking for, I guess. And I know I'm overdue for this, but this is actually my very first all electric vehicle test drive review that I have done on my channel. And taking into account, I have reviewed over 500 cars at this point, I think I am well overdue. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one, including rear legroom, acceleration, braking, steering feel, cargo space, everything about this thing. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the ID4. First one being the Pro, starting at $39,995, which by the way, isn't available yet. It is going to be available in the summer of this year, 2021. Then there's the first edition, which is the one we have today, starting at $43,995. And lastly, the Pro S for $44,495. And by the way, all of these trim levels are rear wheel drive that comes standard, but you can get all wheel drive if you wanted that all-wheel drive simply add thirty six hundred eighty dollars to any of those prices and i have been told that around winter of 2021 is when that all-wheel drive system will be available for the id4 but nonetheless when it comes to the power plan i guess you could call it of the id4 201 horsepower for the rear wheel drive however i will say if you end up getting that all-wheel drive that bumps it up to 302 horsepower Quite a substantial difference there. That is pretty cool. Zero to 60 time for the rear wheel drive setup that we have today, approximately 7.6 seconds. And like I said, we will be testing that out in a little bit here. But as far as the range goes, because I know that's definitely the question on everybody's mind for this thing, 250 miles, which actually is plenty respectable. When you compare it to Tesla, of course, Tesla's going to have a little bit more because they're kind of the pioneers in the game. But still, 250 miles is plenty respectable, and that'll definitely get you where you need to go, essentially. But also regarding the topic of charging, in case anybody is new to the electric game here this can be charged at home by using either a 110 volt or 240 volt connections also capable of dc fast charging of course as well as we are going to maybe attempt to try out here in a little bit and of course the cable is going to be included when you actually make your purchase of the id4 so before we do any kind of acceleration test here in this thing i did want to mention there are some drive modes that do come standard on the id4 that drive mode button is actually conveniently located just underneath of the infotainment screen you just press the mode button it's going to give you eco comfort sport and custom and so essentially what those drive modes are going to do is adjust things like the throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode here and dang this regenerative braking is just bringing me to a stop i didn't even hit the brakes that is pretty cool but anyways let's go ahead and find a straightaway Let's put this thing to the test and let's see if it feels like zero to 60 in 7.6 seconds. All right, you guys, I think we found a straightaway. In three, two, one. This is such an interesting acceleration. <laughs> it's kind of cool. All right, that was a... Uh, that was a first for me. It's just definitely, it doesn't feel like the conventional vehicles that I'm used to driving. Like I said, I'm used to over 500 cars that are not this so far. <laughs> that acceleration was plenty fine. Not the quickest thing in the world, but definitely will get the job done. You're not gonna have any issues in merging onto the highway. It was very quiet, so that is kind of what threw me off as well. But that was a plenty fine acceleration. That was pretty cool. And another thing, going back, these headrests are plenty comfortable. Jesse, you're right, these things are nice. I like these headrests, they're like little pillows, if you will, but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important, and so, front disc rear drum brakes, that is definitely an interesting decision that Volkswagen went with, they're saying essentially with regenerative braking, you're not going to need the rear discs in the back, and having said that, 60 to 0 stopping distance actually does come in at a respectable 119 feet, that's actually, it's pretty wonderful, if I'm being honest, 119 feet is plenty respectable, 
I will say when it comes to the braking feel though, it is kind of spongy. So I kind of was expecting this. I've had this experience in other hybrid vehicles that I've test driven with the sponginess on the braking. It's definitely a case in this thing as well. But having said that, the statistics 60 to zero with 119 feet, that is plenty fine. You're not gonna have any issues there. The braking feels just a little bit weird. Maybe it's just that I'm not used to it. I don't know. Anyways, then touching on suspension and handling, of course, you will find a four wheel independent suspension. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually, I would say, definitely very nice. Definitely soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely. Haven't had any issues there whatsoever. Kind of rides like a luxury vehicle, if you will. So I actually really like it. Anyways, as far as steering feel goes, it actually does make a pretty substantial difference when you change the drive mode. So I definitely was a fan of that as well. Steering feel is very nice when you put it in that sport driving mode. And even when it's not in the sport driving mode, it's definitely very nice. It tends to lean on the heavier side of things, which I personally like. So no issues there for me whatsoever. The touch on cabin noise is probably the best part quite honestly i didn't know what to expect being it an electric vehicle but all i'm really hearing no matter what i do acceleration or whatever is the birds chirping <laughs> that's really all i'm hearing it's pretty cool that when you kind of come to a stop it sounds a little bit like a fighter jet just a little bit which is a pretty cool sound too so i actually really like the cabin noise in this thing no issues there and touching on visibility this is kind of one of those ones it's kind of 50 50 for me you can see all right We'll say it's not the largest rear window back there and the second row headrests are beefy. They essentially go all the way up to the ceiling in this thing. So visibility is probably not the best out there, but it should get the job done. And also rain sensing windshield wipers, by the way, do come standard on every single trim level of the ID4. So that's definitely a big plus. Essential with that is it's gonna turn on the windshield wipers whenever it detects any kind of mist or rainfall. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 volkswagen id4 all right so here she is you guys the new 2021 volkswagen id4 finished in mythos black definitely a unique look to it let's go ahead and start up front on this one as far as that front grille there really isn't any front grille because there's no engine so i guess that kind of makes sense but let me show you guys what is actually under the hood because it does differ from tesla in the fact that there is no front under that front hood it is actually filled up with things like your windshield wiper fluid and everything else so i did want to show that to you guys real quick but nonetheless to the bottom corners there you do get front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination of course led reflector headlights is going to come standard on the pro however if you were to jump up to the pro s or the first edition trim that we have today you will get led projector headlights so a little better illumination there either way you get the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you also led signature daytime running lights this is one of the coolest features because if you really look at the daytime running lights it does extend kind of onto that non-front grille next to the volkswagen logo which i kind of liked and also there's kind of a diamond pattern pattern within the sides of those projector headlights as well so it's definitely a very unique look nothing like you ever see before on any other vehicle so I really liked those LED daytime running lights that are on this thing also automatic high beams do come standard as well meaning just set the high beams when it's dark out and when there's a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim back those high beams back to low beams and then vice versa when the vehicle is gone so that's definitely a very convenient feature as well and again the Pro S and first edition trims are also going to add in a illuminated front grille or illuminated non-front grille I guess you could say also adaptive headlights for those two trims as well meaning when you're going around a bend at night headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so that is always a good thing as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right so now swinging around to the side black window surrounds will come standard I do like the silver roof rails on top it kind of ties together with that silver trim accenting towards the top of this one as well also that silver accent it continues on to the front fender where you see the first lettering since we do have the first edition trim level of the id4 here illuminated door handles are also going to come with the pro s and first edition as well and that's pretty cool at night rear privacy glass also coming standard on every single trim level when it comes to those side mirrors they are power adjustable heated side mirrors for all trim levels with led integrated turd signals within them as well so that was pretty cool then take a look down at the wheel setup it is going to differ amongst the trim levels the pro and the pro s are both 
going to get 19 inch two-toned machined alloys. However, if you were to go with that first edition trim that we have today, which by the way, are now all sold out. So you do have to get them out of dealership if you actually wanted them at this point, but that will bump that up to 20 inch first edition specific machine finished alloys. So that is of course what you guys are looking at right now. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the ID4 here. So starting up top, body colored shark fin antenna, of course does come standard just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Also a very cool looking taillight design. LED taillights do come standard, of course, on this one as expected. We got some ID4 badging just below the Volkswagen logo, of course, and I like how they put it in white. That's a pretty cool look to it. Matte black lower rear bumper. I kind of wish that would have been body colored personally. Looks kind of, uh, looks kind of off, I guess, on a vehicle like the ID4. But anyways, typically at this point, I'll do an exhaust clip for you guys. But of course, this is an all electric vehicle. So what I am going to do is rather just mention the towing capacity, which actually comes in at 2,700 pounds. But now, since we are round back, let's go ahead and make our way to the cargo capacity and how to open this thing up. All right, so now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob, which by the way, is a freaking cool key. It's kind of a heavy weight to it. It's very heavy duty. But of course the button in the middle is going to be to open that rear hatch. You got the Volkswagen logo on the other side, but also a button on the lift gate itself. It is a power lift gate. It is a hands-free power lift gate if you were to go with that Pro S or first edition as well, by the way. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 30.3 cubic feet behind that second row. If you were to fold down the second row, because there is a 60-40 split, that is going to bump that up to 64.2 cubic feet. And of course, in the cargo area, you will also find a 12 volt power outlet. There is some LED cargo lighting back there as well. Little bit of cubby space to the sides, and there's some grocery bag hooks. And if you were to lift up under the cargo floor there, you will actually find some in-floor storage back there as well and quite a bit of it. So that was pretty cool that I found that too. But anyways, now making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.6 inches. So for reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. You will also find rear ventilation back there that does come standard. Also a rear center armrest with cup holders as well and a couple of coat hooks back there too. But overall, seats were plenty comfortable in the back. But now let's make our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard, heated front seats also coming standard actually as well. If you were to go with the Pro S or first edition, you will find leatherette seating that will be 12 way power adjustable front seats, not just the driver's seat, but the passenger seat as well. So that is pretty cool. And lumbar support does come with that as well, by the way, and seats are plenty comfortable. That's one of the first things I noticed. These seats are really comfortable actually. And you do have the ID logo towards the top portion of the seats too, which I found was pretty cool. Also wanted to mention massage seating and memory settings are available for this one then as well if you wanted to go that route but then taking a look at the steering wheel also a very nice feature of the id4 here it is completely wrapped in a white leather which may get dirty but for now looks pretty dang cool i will say that so it is leather wrapped it is actually heated as well which is pretty nice and it did telescope out pretty far as well to help me find my perfect driving position you do have some first lettering towards the bottom portion of it and it is a flat bottom then as well and of course the first is just going to be for the first edition trim but anyways now making our way to the startup because this one is like no other vehicle i have ever driven it is all keyless entry so just leave the key in your pocket you got your volt Volkswagen logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the panic button and then the button to pop the rear hatch. And it is a pretty heavy duty key too. So I kind of like that. But anyways, to actually start this one, of course it is keyless entry. So just lift up underneath the door handle there. Put your foot on the pause sign, which is part of the pedals. The pause is the brake. And then just turn this knob just to the right of this digital gauge cluster forward. And then if you wanted to put it in reverse, turn it backwards. This is unlike any other vehicle I've ever driven. This is pretty cool. So it is different. I love different. So that is pretty cool. But anyways, that is how you're going to actually start going in this one. But now let's actually make our way to the gauges. I will say it does have your safety information. It does have a digital speed readout. It also has what gear, or I shouldn't say what gear you're in, whether you're in drive, reverse, or neutral all the way to the right and the speed limit. And that's maybe the little finicky thing that I'm sure you could turn off but it kind of annoyed me a little bit because every time I went one mile per hour over the speed limit, it beeped at me and it showed me that the speed limit was exceeded. And I know you could turn that off in some way or another, but 
the constant beeping whenever I went one mile, it literally was one mile per hour ever, kind of annoying. But anyways, it essentially looks like a video game looking forward into the gauges. And it, quite honestly though, they kind of do a better job than your traditional gauges, I will say that, because it was very easy to read this thing. It's kind of direct and to the point. It only has the necessary information that you're gonna need while you're actually driving. But the infotainment screen, that's a different story. We'll get to that in a second here. But now let's go ahead and touch on overall interior quality here real quick. First thing, as I alluded to previously, the pedals themselves. Gas pedal is going to be labeled with a play button, which is kind of cool. YouTube, you should like that. The brake pedal then is going to be labeled with a pause button, which I absolutely love. It's one of the unique quirks of the ID4, and I'm a huge fan of that panoramic fixed glass roof one of the first things i noticed when i got in this one and there's no break in it in the middle or anything it just goes all the way to the back it lets in so much light in this thing i love it and that is actually going to come with the pro s and the first edition so therefore we do have it today auto dimming rear view mirror comes standard across the board along with dual zone climate control and a wireless phone charger then as well you will find eight different colors of ambient lighting as well we actually have it set on blue right now but that also comes standard across the board i absolutely love that Overall, the fit and finish was plenty fine. It's definitely more on the simplistic side. So there aren't a whole lot of buttons. Really, there's only maybe four buttons or five buttons just underneath of the infotainment screen here. And everything else is pretty simplistic, to be quite honest. One of the things I kind of like, there is a little kind of area just underneath of the cup holders here that kind of is open. So you could probably store something under there when you leave the vehicle, which I think is kind of cool. It would be kind of hidden since it's covered by the cup holders here. And by the way, there are two cup holders that's pretty much as expected. Just behind that, you will find that wireless phone charger I was mentioning just underneath the cup holders kind of. Two phone charging ports if you'd rather go that route. And there is a decent amount of storage just behind that. There's no actual center armrest with storage within that. It's kind of open, which you can close by the way. You can completely close that and keep it hidden if you wanted to. But the center armrests are actually individualized to both the driver and passenger seat. So that is where they are going to be. So in case anybody was curious about that. So overall, although it's simplistic, I kind of really like it. It's got a nice look to it on the interior here. But now let's make our way to the infotainment screen. This thing is massive and by the way there's two different infotainment screen sizes there's the 10 inch version which comes standard and then there's the 12 inch color touchscreen display coming with the pro s in the first edition that being the one that you are looking at right now of course but bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard android auto apple carplay as well factory navigation system also coming standard across the board you can check out your ambient lighting settings up there you can check out your heated seats climate control time of the day outside temperature drive modes pretty much everything you could possibly think of is going to be up on that infotainment screen essentially so including if you actually go to charge up the id4 it's going to show you in real time how much charge this thing is going to have so that is actually the screen i would probably leave it on if i were to go and charge this thing which i think we are going to try to do here in a little bit but you can also of course check out your radio settings up there and by the way seven speakers do come standard for all trims on the id4 here so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio so we got playing today and let's test out this seven speaker sound system we have here today actually not that bad I was kind of expecting less to be quite honest, but that was actually decent for a seven speaker sound system. I will say that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys is of course, when you do put the ID4 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the majority of that screen, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there as well, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, adaptive cruise control, that's pretty cool, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning and autonomous emergency braking as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ID4, I love the pedals. That is probably the coolest feature of this thing. Anyways, also the panoramic glass roof, the fact that there's no break in the middle of the roof here, I love that it's just all glass. It's a pretty cool feature as well. It also has a pretty respectable driving range. I gotta give it to it. 250 miles at this point of the game is pretty darn good if I'm being honest. And the cool thing about electric vehicles is they're so much less expensive to maintain as opposed to their petrol counterparts. Cause of course the engine block breaks, there's no engine. You're not gonna have to fix that 
that obviously there's no oil changes with regenerative braking i still can't really say that word but with that style braking you're less inclined to switch out the brake pads as frequently because the vehicle essentially slows itself once you let off the gas so that's another big plus to this one as well and it's overall just less expensive to maintain for all of those kind of reasons but as far as the constructive criticism goes that i have for this one styling is so so it's not bad but it's not going to blow your socks off it is kind of a unique it has a unique look to it so i kind of like it for that reason but it's just nothing too spectacular i guess you could say and also when you compare it to the competition being specifically tesla tesla does offer a bit more range being over 300 miles of range when you compare this to the tesla model y or the tesla model 3 and zero to 60 times for the teslas if you're comparing the same price range it's going to come in at under five seconds which a little bit more driver enjoyment i guess you could say for that reason when it comes to the tesla although i've never driven a tesla yet if you want to let me review your tesla go ahead and dm me on instagram or twitter or whatever but anyways that is about it for this one you guys I actually really liked this actually for my first full electric car review go ahead and put in the comments what you think of this one feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold